Well, hey guys, so this is me doing a very simple oil and filter change on a 2016 Toyota Corolla S. This is a very simple service that even your regular Joe at Jiffy Lube can perform. And, um, you know, I'm a mechanic. I've been doing this, mm, I'm going to say, probably 16, 17 years full time at this point. Um, I am uh, the son of the owner. He's a, let's say, 50 year ish master tech um, who is not just a car mechanic. He started out as a boat mechanic, he knows everything that kind of guy. Um, he started training me way back about 2000 and I want to say five or six and this has been a slow progression to get to the point where I am now. I'm um, now of course an oil change is a very simple thing. Um, the average person can even do an oil change but I wanted to do a video just to show uh, my process and the first thing I'm doing here is resetting the maintenance reminder. I always do that before I even bother getting out of the car and Toyota you switch to trip A, you shut the key off, you hold the trip button, turn the key on and it'll reset which you just saw. Then I remove the oil change sticker. I leave the car in neutral so that I can roll it to pick it up on the lift. Uh, I have to close my door. It's a little bit cold down here currently in January. Now, um, toss that old sticker out. Bye bye. I forgot to pop the hood. And I need to put my gloves on before I start making a mess. Gotta keep my hands clean, you know. And Toyotas are a piece of cake, to be honest. Um, some cars get tricky as far as a simple service like an oil change. Uh, European cars, I mean, heck, a Porsche is a completely different beast than this car. And it's a little bit more involved. In this car, there's no underbelly, cover, um, underbelly covers. Um, silly reset procedures that need the scanner or anything. It's an easy maintenance reminder reset. Um, easy access to the drain plug, to the oil filter. It's all very easy and simple. And uh, so first step, you know, pop the hood after we're setting the reminder and uh, then pick the car. Uh, this is also my very first automotive video, so I'm using a body harness with my GoPro, and I'm kind of figuring this out as I go. Um, yeah, he's doing nice. It's kind of hard to get the right view on certain things, so uh, oh, yeah, you know, right. if any of you guys are familiar with setting a lift, I'm simply putting the lift arms under the pinch weld and picking up the vehicle first thing I'm going to get into after it's overhead is going to be draining the oil and then usually while the oil is draining I'll bother to gather the necessary oil and filter to perform this service which is um, in this car's case going to be 020 oil which is very thin fully synthetic oil. Now, everybody has their own opinions on how far they'll drive on such oil. I generally recommend 5,000 miles because this is just a standard cartridge filter. Uh, sorry, a canister filter um, as opposed to a cartridge, which canister filters are cheap and they just simply don't last as long you know, when people decide their oil change intervals, I mean, hey, do whatever you want. You can follow the manufacturer's recommendations, but in general, when you have a canister filter like this, even though it's synthetic, I recommend about 5,000 miles max. So I got my 
First I grabbed I think a 17 and it ended up being a 14 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen, I already did that. <laughs> loosen the uh, drain plug. Get ready for the oil drain to catch the dirty oil. Now, believe it or not, um, this car has actually gone way, way beyond the recommended interval. Um, I, I'm forgetting off the bat, but I do believe this car went somewhere between hey, the work order? about like eight to 10,000 uh, miles, stuff. which is plain old silly. And that oil was just looking jet black way way Jeez. too long completely overdue not recommended um at least it is a synthetic oil so it can kind of withstand going higher mileage but this was far past the recommended oil change mileage on the oil change sticker you'll notice i try to loosen the filter sometimes they're hand tight that one was too tight uh, so i'm gonna have to use my pliers coming up but this is just me uh, getting the filter, which ends up being the wrong filter. It turns out there's a couple of options that could go on this car. The first one that she just told me I should use is actually a cartridge, which was incorrect. It does end up being a canister. And uh, I'll find that out coming up. Now, uh, pumping my 020 oil it takes 4.4 quarts. Pretty simple, straightforward. So we're going to fill up my little jug here with my 020 fully synthetic oil, which this car will be slurping up, coming up. And see, yeah, while it's draining, I'm getting all the necessary parts. Oops, forgot my filter. If you guys hear me breathing, it's because this camera, this GoPro, just happens to pick up me breathing. But besides that, See, already I'm immediately wondering, wait a minute, that's not the right filter, right? Let me look. Nope, it's a canister. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of a mouth breather uh, to begin with. So anyways, sorry for the heavy breathing, but that's just my nature. Okay, put the drain plug back in. It's drained sufficiently. Clean up a little goo on my fingers. And tighten that plug up. From experience, I can tell you if you put the plug in and don't tighten it, there's a fair chance that you just might forget to tighten it, and that's definitely something you don't want to do. I'm always, at least in the past, I've been utterly embarrassed when I've forgotten to tighten a drain plug. It's a pretty simple thing. This isn't a particularly difficult service. I mean, for goodness sake, you know, uh, the phrase complete cycles of action comes into mind, and that's a pretty good phrase to keep in your head when you're a mechanic you know don't uh, screw something on by hand and then walk away and go take a piss because you just might forget that you didn't end up cinching it down completely um, just if I screw in the drain plug it gets tightened uh, so I just popped that filter off of there real simple drains off the excess oil in the oil cooler uh, look at this again and think to myself, wait a minute, that's not the right filter. I say to my secretary, hey, this is not the right filter. I put the old one back. Have a little powwow with her. Uh, I need the right filter. She happens to be checking in a customer, I think. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying not to push her too hard because she's talking to a customer, but... It, that's a cartridge. It's a, not a cartridge. Yep. Pretty much. I'm going to give her a sec bad. to figure out what filter I need. Well, 
Hallelujah. So, I was taught from a young age to lube the O-ring. Well, let me tell you, if there is already oil, see I'm pointing at it on that surface where it's going to seal, you really don't need to lube the O-ring. That one already had oil. So, we do that as a courtesy to the next tech who just might end up unscrewing that filter so that it won't be too tight. The rubber O-ring a rubber gasket on the oil filter seals it sufficiently even with a film of oil on top of it and it just makes it easier to unscrew those filters only go hand tight you may have noticed that no pliers used to put it on you just simply screw it down by hand and you really don't have to go too tight on it how tight do you go well the same as a drain plug I always uh, tell people now, how tight to make things, and this is kind of a general rule for any bolt or gasket. Well, you want to make it tight enough that it doesn't leak, but you don't want to go so tight that you might break it or cause a problem. Huh, wait, you want the porch just right, isn't that right? So, anyways, filters specifically though, you should be able to tighten them by hand and you should not need to use anything to secure them too tight. In fact, the last filter that was on there, the fact that I had to use a wrench, kind of indicates to me that it was over-tightened. All right, so I've uh, reached the point where I'm gonna put some oil on this bad boy. Now, I bought this awesome oil um, funnel set from the, what was this guy? Mac Tool truck, that's right. I saw these in some videos. I actually had a little trouble threading it to, to start here, but uh, I saw these filled, these uh, oil funnels and I loved them, so I bought a set of them. I find them incredibly nice. Um, I've all of my career been using just a plain old funnel that can fall over and cause a spill and a mess. Well, these ones, you just pick a clear tube that corresponds to the make and model you have and it screws right into the original threads and seals at the bottom. You have to make sure at the bottom of the clear portion that it's sitting flush with the oil fill hole at the top of the engine so that it doesn't leak, of course, which can cause a huge mess and be a big pain in the butt to clean up. So yeah, you don't have to worry about spills or anything with this style of funnel. It's a nice thing. While it might take a second to find the right adapter for your oil fill hole, at the end of the day, I'm very pleased with it. It unscrews easily. That red part transfers to the clear part that you want to use. I like it. Simple, easy. And I just don't have to fuss with holding the funnel. That's very nice. I like it. I first saw this on some car repair videos here on YouTube and decided to get it. So we're done, we've filled our oil, we've got our new filter, and um, we'll put our jug back where it belongs for the next oil change, we'll get that out of my way when I back out. So that was pretty simple and easy, so kick the lift arms out of the way. And uh, we're going to move on to see what the miles are here on the car so that I can add... 5,000 to whatever the current mileage is and create an oil change sticker. We just have this little tiny label printer set up here and we slap the mileage onto the oil change sticker. A little dance here you gotta do every time. Get these paper off, get the mileage on the sticker, peel off the back, ready to slap it on the windshield. They stick most of the time. You may have noticed I left the car in neutral this whole time. Well, sometimes you want to put them in park if it's going to be a long oil change, but generally I can do an oil change fast enough that I don't even have to turn the key off. 
I'll let my secretary know the mileage there real quick. Back around. Simple, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. Now this car was actually here a couple of weeks ago. I already did a whole general check over and got a big list of items they opted for an oil change alone. So that's all we did. No point in checking anything else specifically on this car. We're done for now. That was it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. Take care.